Hello everyone and welcome back to the Nerd Cave. So today we're going to look at how can we add a joystick to a macro keyboard and I'm going to show you all the changes you'll have to make to the PCB and all the changes to the code. So let's get started. This macro keyboard has a total of 12 keys, one rotary encoder that also acts as an extra key when pressed, an OLED display and then a joystick that can be used to control your mouse and when you push down on the joystick, it will trigger a left click on a standard normal mouse. Before we look at the PCB design, let's look at all the components you will need if you want to create a macro keyboard like this for yourself. We will use the Raspberry Pi Pico as our microcontroller and use CircuitPython to program everything. We will use this SSD1306 OLED display to indicate what mode we are in and which macro was sent to the computer. We will use this PS2 joystick that we will use to create a mouse. We will need one rotary encoder and a knob and with that three 10 kilo ohm resistors. 12 keyboard switches, here you can use any type that you prefer. We will need female header pins that we can easily connect and remove the Pico from our PCB. For the keycaps for our switches, I got this SpongeBob SquarePants keycaps. The next step now is to go and design the PCB. We will be using Easy EDA. First place the Raspberry Pi Pico. There are a lot of ones contributed by the community. If you search for it, find one that suits your needs. The one I am using is just a simple through hole with no debug holes. We can then go add the switches. I'll be using these Cherry MX switches. Just go add 12 of them. We need to add a net label to all of them and we will give 3.3 volt from the Pico from the one side of the switch and from the other switches we will label it from 0 to 11 connected to GP0 up to GP10. Next let's add the rotary encoder by using the library we can search for it. We will need to add free 10 kilo ohm resistors using the common library. Make sure that you select through hole actual resistors. Make all the necessary labels and connect them to the Raspberry Pi Pico. I added a free pen header in case you want to add programmable RGB LEDs to your macro keyboard, as well as a two pen header to add a switch that you can add to change the mode of your keyboard. For a joystick, we will use the library to search for a user contributed part and make all the necessary connections to the Pico. We follow the same process for the OLED display by searching for it and then placing it and connecting it to the Pico. Make sure about the ground and VCC of the OLED as these two can either be VCC then ground or ground then VCC so that you don't accidentally burn out your OLED display. After all that we can go arrange the components on the PCB and I usually use the auto root function since this type of project is not too complex. If this is your first time using Easy EDA, I know it might be confusing but don't worry, I am planning to make a course on doing 10 simple projects and making PCBs for them. So make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on that. So now that our PCB is done, let's quickly go and order the PCB. We will order the PCB from the channel sponsor, JLC PCB. The process is very easy. Click on fabrication and then select the one-click order PCB. This will take you to the JLC PCB website. Here you can make changes to the PCB. We will keep everything as default. The only thing that we want to change here is the color of the PCB. Then all you need to do is save the card, put in all the shipping details and order it. Currently JLC PCB has a promotion on six layer PCBs, which will allow you to create more complex PCBs. There's a whole video to explain everything that I will leave in the link in the description. So make sure to check out JLC PCB for all your PCB needs. After a few days I received the PCB and all that is left now to do is to go solder all the components. The enclosure for this macro keyboard is very simple. I exported the SFG file from the PCB and then created something in Fusion 360. Now if you have never used Fusion 360 before, that will also be in a course. This enclosure was laser cut but I do plan to make a 3D printed version so that more people can create this macro keyboard. All the files that you will need for this project is available on my website. We first solder the female header pins to the bottom of the PCB. I use Prestig to keep the header pins in place making it a lot more easier to solder components. 
We can then solder the three resistors on the bottom as well. We then press all the keys on the laser cut part to keep the switches in place and stable. And then we can solder all the switches to the PCB. After that we can then go solder the joystick, the rotary encoder and OLED display. To assemble the bottom part of the enclosure, we will use this M3 female to female hex brass standoff and secure them with screws. Make sure to connect the Raspberry Pi Pico to the PCB before assembling the bottom part of the enclosure. Now go add the switches, the knob of the rotor encoder and also for the joystick. All that is left to do now is to go install CircuitPython on a Pico and upload all the code. To do this we first need to put the Pico in boot mode. We can do this by pressing and holding down the boot cell button, then plug in the USB. Your Pico will then show up as a storage device. In the description a link will be given to my website. If you click on that link, then click on code and then click on the CircuitPython link. We want to download both the CircuitPython firmware and the code zip file. And you can do this by clicking on the folder and then clicking on view raw and this will start to download it. And then same for the zip file. You will just click on a zip file, click on view raw and it will download the zip file to your computer. Let's start by flashing the Pico with CircuitPython. We have our .uf2 file here. We'll just copy or drag and drop it in here. And then it will flash the Pico with that version of CircuitPython. So just give it a few seconds and then it will update the firmware. After the firmware is updated, it will then show CircuitPy. Now for the code here, we're just going to leave all of this here and we'll replace it with the macro keyboard code. Just go and extract all of this. And then we can copy everything inside here and then go paste it and replace it on the circuit python. Just click on replace the files in the destination. And now this file will run by itself and you will see your macro keyboard is working. Your macro keyboard will now show nerd cave macro keyboard. I will later show you how you can update this to anything. And then for the mode button by default now I made it this right bottom corner button. So if I press this it will go to blender mode. Windows, Premiere Pro, After Effects, Fusion 360, and then back to Blender. Now you can go add more modes if you want to. I'm also going to show you how you can add different modes and then how you can change the keys. So let's open Fony and we can go through all the code together. So we start by importing a lot of code from CircuitPython and the libraries. And here we import the mouse. So that is the HID mouse library and same here for the keyboard. And then here is where we're going to make our own templates. So here we have Blender mode, Windows mode, Premiere mode, After Effects mode and Fusion 360 mode. And I have also included a template mode. So here we can just copy and paste this, call it something else. And then we can import it here as well. So this is if you want to go add more um, than these ones here. So these are just for examples, the key codes or macros in them is not specifically made for these ones. So this is just for an example purpose. Then here we define the constants. This will be for our potentiometer for our joystick. And we're going to make it in steps so that we can see how much we have pushed the joystick in order to calculate how much the X axis and Y axis need to move. So here we set up the whole mouse. We have the X axis in which pen we connect it to and also our Y axis and also remember the joystick have a button that we can press which we connected to GP20. Here we just have a function to get the voltage value from the potentiometer because remember the joystick is just a potentiometer and then we can see how much the value change if we move to the left, right, up or down. And here we change that values into steps. All of these are still just to set up our keyboard device now, if you want to find the key codes, there is a link to the CircuitPython documentation. Let me quickly show you how does that look. So this is the library that simulates our USB device to be a human interface device. So currently, like we said, it's a keyboard and mouse. Now, if you go here to Adafruit HID key codes, here is all the different key codes and what they relate to. So for example, we will see here, this is like a 13, a 14, if we go here, you'll see there's for home, 
um, keypad 5, keypad equals 2. So it shows you here all the key codes that we can then use. So for example, we know we have here is the Windows key and so on. Now they do give you a few examples here. So here we send a key code. Um, for example, if we want to send an A or capital A and so on. So we can add different key codes together to go make a macro. We also have consumer control code. So this is if you want to change the brightness of your screen. Maybe you want to mute, play, record, rewind. So this is all your multimedia keys that you have. Now same here with mouse. If we look here, here's the mouse move and the mouse click function. So everything is very well documented here. Here we set up our OLED display. And if we go down here a little bit, here's where you can change the nerd cave and macro keyboard. So all of this is just to draw a small inner rectangle that you have seen. But here you can update this to show even an image if you wanted to. And then here we initialize all the keys of our keyboard. Here we set up the rotary encoder. And here we set up the rotary encoder function to see if it was turned to the left or to the right. And here we have the list of defined modes. And here you can change the mode as you need. So by default, no mode will be selected. It will just be zero. And then once you press that right corner key, it will then go to Blender mode. Here it will check which mode we are in and display it on the screen. In our while loop, we constantly check the X and Y values of our joystick. And then we can check if the steps have changed and then we'll move our mouse with the X and Y. And here we can see if the mouse button is pressed. And if it is pressed, then we'll have a mouse click or a mouse left down. And we need a small debounce delay so that it doesn't click a few hundred times. Here we can check if the mode is changed. So remember our mode is currently zero. So if we press the mode button, it will add one. And then we will check which mode we are in. And if the mode is greater than five, we go back to mode one, which was Blender. And here we again can just display the type of mode we are in. If we are mode one, we will have Blender mode handle key press. So here, if we want to see what is all these key presses, let's go to the Blender mode. Now again, we just need to import a few things from the library. We can again use that update screen to update the display if we have pressed a macro. Then here we have that handle key press that will get everything from this code.py file. And here we have the macro name. So you can just go add more macro names as needed. So I just have done from zero to four here. So for example, play pause, play pause again, open Chrome, volume up and so on. So you'll see if we press the first key or key zero, We'll just send the consumer control, play pause, we'll have a small debounce and update this screen with play pause. And same with the second function or second key, sorry. Now, if we press key number three, we press the GUI button or Windows button. We wait a little bit, then we write a text Chrome and this backslash N will just act as an enter button. And then we'll wait a bit, we'll press backslash N again and then we'll wait and then we'll type in this YouTube link here, which if you go do this, you will be recrolled. Now, if we look at this one here, this key press will then increase the volume and this one will just send the letter G or capital G. So we can just go add the other keys here. So depending on how big your macro keyboard is, it will just go to, let's say, key 11, 12, 13, 14, and so on. And here we'll check the rotor encoder, if it is turned clockwise or anti-clockwise. If it's turned clockwise, send the key code right arrow. If it's anti-clockwise, it will send left arrow. And here we can check if the button is pressed. So if the button is pressed, we send right arrow, and we also print our um, button press. So if this was just used for debugging. Now, if we go to this template mode, we can see here, Everything is just left blank for you. Um, you're going to have to update this handle key press file here. And then here you can just replace all of this with your own code. So all of this just sends G, G, G and so on. Okay, and same here with the rotary encoder. This is just to increase the volume and decrease the volume. And again, it sends G here. So if you're going to make this template mode to be part of your macro keyboard, remember you're going to have to go import this here. You're going to have to go add this here and then we will just go down 
and we're gonna have to go add that extra mode here we're also gonna have to update this mode if it is greater than six since we have an extra mode so we probably can use variables to make it much more simpler and then finally we're gonna also have to have this lf mode if it is equal to six then we'll run this template mode or whatever name you have given it so hopefully that makes all sense there is a write-up on my website as well to help you with this i hope you found this video helpful let me know what do you want to see with the next version of macro keyboard this probably will not be my last one i am going to make a few other ones and i also want to explore different microcontrollers so let me know in a comment section down below i will see you in the next video